So I will be creating the uh, SolidWorks assembly for the grinder assembly. Okay, so I'll just create a new file or you can select this welcome SolidWorks, then new assembly. Okay. Okay, by default, okay, the begin assembly or insert component will be available. So I'll just select cancel and cancel here. Okay, so under assembly command manager, you can select to insert components. Okay, and that is you can also cancel and then browse here. Okay, you can browse. Okay. And then you can select where you have saved those files okay for example i have saved the grinder assembly in the documents then under grinder folder so i have here my base okay so i'll select that one then open notice that it is connected to your cursor so this since this is the base so it should be fixed so i'll just select the ok button here Okay, so that it would be fixed you have a parenthesis f so this component or part is now fixed okay other way of inserting parts is by means of opening your uh, file explorer folder so you locate your folder where your parts have been saved you will select handle click hold and then drag release okay the knob release slider okay release and then another slider so we need two sliders <clears throat> okay then uh, one handle one knob and then the base part okay so all of those last parts that are inserted are uh, movable as you'll notice here parentheses then dash under define so they can be moved a certain location so they are not fixed and like the piece if i'm going to click hold and drag it will not uh, move together with my cursor unlike the slider or the knob okay so let us begin assembling this model using the mate tool okay so i select my mate tool then this is the mate property manager so mate selection it should it could be faces edges vertices points and so on so I would start at the slider itself, okay? So first is I'm going to rotate the model by pressing the mouse wheel. So uh, this is highlighted. So if I'm going to select this face, that name of that face will be included in the mate selection, okay? So entity summate. So it should be sliding on those paths. So I could select the other face as this flat surface here automatically AutoCAD will provide you a uh, meet okay so standard meets that is coincident so I would accept that one next is that if you cannot view the faces of these sides of the inclined faces you can click then hold and then move it at a certain location so that you could select a certain face like for example this one and that other face that should be coincident then okay similar procedure applied to this other slider so let's say the bottom face then the path flat surface and coincident then if the face is not visible you can select then hold and then relocate that on a certain location so i would select this face and this space okay then i would select okay so this sliders now slide through this path in this direction if i'm going to move left or right it will just slide up or down okay similar with this one left or right if i'm going to move up or down it doesn't uh, move together with the crosshair okay now selecting the handle so Mid command this is still invoked you have cancelled this one no problem but then you can select mate now i will be selecting the cylindrical surfaces of the two smaller 
holes so first one is the middle let's say the middle one together with the cylindrical face of one of the hole of the slider let's say this one okay so that is concentric okay and then okay then the bottom face and the top face of this one then coincident then okay now similar procedure with the hole and this one so that is uh, coincident i concentric okay then okay now i'll just cancel this one i'll just click hold and then move this handle uh, rotation rotating model okay so this is an animation of the model itself <clears throat> So last part will be the hole. Meet this hole here and this larger hole here. Okay. So again, if that represents an alignment somewhat like this one, you could move or change the alignment setting using the mate alignment here. Okay. Then okay. Then the top bottom surface of that knob and the top surface of this uh, handle that's coincident then okay and then the, if you're going to cancel this one if you're going to rotate this handle it somewhat slides a little bit then you need to meet the <clears throat> portion of the knob let's say locate the knob here okay I have your knob expand that let's say the right plane and the handle where's the handle here expand the handle okay somewhat on that plane let's say front plane probably should be parallel okay then okay then check so if you're going to rotate that handle so it's all now uh, rotate smoothly now inserting some components like screws uh, bolts okay so you need to use the uh, toolbox under design library then toolbox okay if it doesn't load you can click uh, add in okay then let's say uh, either which and see inch okay bolts and screws mm, let's uh, see which screw should be fitted let's view machine screw pan mm -hmm. round round okay here pan cross head Okay, if I'm going to click hold and then drag release okay so I have that properties there okay so I just cancel this component so I just look for another one so I just back okay and back again okay under toolbox let's just select unsymmetric Okay, unsymmetric. So again, so I select unsymmetric bolts and screws. Hmm. Machine screws. Okay. Then I select pan cross head. Click hold drag. Release. Then under its setting, I would choose uh, what should I choose here? M3, probably. And four four then that should do it m3 length of four thread of four then okay then once you have done click in the graphics area to add so i'll just add another one i'll just click there then i'll press escape key to cancel okay i have two here that should fit on these holes here so i'll add another one again pan cross head uh, let's say m5 length of 6 6 okay so that should do it 
I'll just select the OK button here. Then insert just a single pan cross set for this hole. So I'll just press escape key. Now apply the mate. Okay, let us start for this uh, screw. Okay, I have selected the cylindrical surface or I just click the clear selection so that it would be clear with you. So I would select the cylindrical surface here. Okay, then I'll just select the cylindrical surface on this portion here. Okay, notice that the alignment is different, so I'll just change the mate alignment. Okay, then click the OK button. Okay, and then I'll select this bottom piece and the bottom piece of the handle itself. Okay, then coincident and OK. So you're good to go for that. Similar applies to these two cross heads here, pan cross heads. So I'll just select this cylindrical surface that hole okay where did it go at the bottom okay then concentric okay so i'll just move it upward and then i'll select the bottom face then the top face of the handle similar apply is applied to this portion here then this hole where it goes, goes, okay, then okay, so I'll just move it upward, then I'll just select the bottom piece of that head and the top piece of the sandal, then okay, then okay, so there it goes, it completes the assembly, could just simply change my orientation to isometric, I could rotate this smoothly now. Okay. Now, upon completing this <clears throat> assembly, we will now change the appearance of each of these individual parts. Okay. Uh, let's try to go to our folder. So I'll just open. So Control O. I'll just open the base. Okay. So another window okay there it goes so changing of appearance is under this task pane appearance and tackles okay appearance color you can select one of this one let's say example it is uh, painted let's say sprayed okay let's say red click hold then drag then release then apply to the part itself Okay, I'll select the part, okay, then <clears throat> you can also right click, appearance, okay, so you can select that one, appearance, okay, you can remove it if you want to, okay, you can apply, okay, by double clicking also, or click hold drag release, okay. Then if you're going to save this uh, part of the base, then if you're going to close this on this window, okay, on your assembly, okay, it also changes because this part, okay, this base is originally from that base part. So if you're going to change, let's say, I'm going to change on this assembly, let's say the knob, right click. Edit appearance. Okay. Say this part. Okay, you can select rubber for example or spread. Double click. Okay. Then you can change the color if you want, saturation and so on. Say that portion. Then okay. So if you're going to open the knob okay it also changes it is save goes okay so it, it is fully associative like for example for this particular one i just added this uh, appearance 
then let's say sprayed I just double click and then change the color something like this color okay, and also for the handle right click then select edit appearance drop down menu okay so let's say right click edit appearance drop down select that portion the name of your part then let's say it's a braid i'll just click this one then change the color based on my uh, preferred color okay should do it then apply okay so all parts now have been changed in appearances okay color okay then let us just save file and save us then if this window pops up okay rebuild and save the document should be recommended so i'll just select this one then go to your folder where your parts are located so let's change that name to let's say this part and just change the name to grinder assembly and the file is as you notice here slasm or asm that is simply solidworks assembly or assembly then save save all for the components or parts that you have uh, change in color so it will be applied to all the parts of this assembly okay. so i'll just change the orientation to isometric view then you can play with it a lot okay and that should do it